Something I have noticed with myself is lust. Despite my meditation, I keep seeming to get dragged down by this back to square one. There are times it doesn't get to me, but is this normal for someone that still feels new to Buddhism? Yes, this is very normal because Buddhism isn't a quick fix. Buddhism is in fact teaching you that there is no fix, that you can't turn your emotions on and off. And the way to deal with any emotion, including lust, is to realize this, is to come to let go of it. You, you actually get to the point where you're so disgusted by, not, not the emotions themselves, but by the whole process, which you, you become kind of, kind of horrified in a sense of how uncontrollable it all is. Whereas before you thought, yeah, I like this and I'll just be able to turn it on and off and on. And when you practice it, you start this starts coming up, and it comes up when it's not supposed to come up, right? As it always does anyway. But you didn't you didn't notice it until you started meditating. You see that it comes up when it's not supposed to, and you you start you know lusting after your best friend's girlfriend, and and so on, or or you know whatever. Um, and and it. It begins, you know, in med well, in meditation, it begins to horrify you, or it begins, you begin to become disgusted with this whole process and realize that it's not really manageable. It's not really um, positive. It's not bringing you happiness. It's not bringing you any benefit. It's only disturbing your peace and bringing you more chaos in your mind and dulling your senses and so on. And so you slowly give it up. During that time, you have to you have to understand that you've been doing the opposite for most of your life, most likely. Most likely you've been encouraging it. You've been doing things that um, bring about more lust and 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 reaffirm the idea of the, the of how good it is and how pleasant it is and how wonderful it is. So that that that's what you're seeing in meditation, and that's the truth. That that's the truth that you have to live with. It doesn't just go away because you meditate. You've been. It's like you've got a closet, and you've been putting stuff into your closet and just closing the door and saying, "Oh yes, yes, one more, one more, one more." And in meditation, you open the door and you say, "Oh no, you see all this stuff that's inside, and you have to pull it all out." But but more than that, it's like. The force of karma, the force of everything that you've done, has been built up, like kind of like stuff in the closet, but it's so much that it's packed in there that it's, it's breaking down the door. But the reason why it reoccurs is because of this habit, because it's become habitual, it's become a part of who you are. And so, yeah, even powerful med people are doing intensive meditation, it comes back. And they practice and they say, oh, lust is not a good thing. And, and they're able to do with it. And then, boom, it comes back. And then they, they're lusting again. Uh, so so it's, not meditation it's not the case that meditation practice just does away with it. Or once you see, oh, this is bad, it's gone. Uh, you have to really change the, the way the mind looks at the world. The mind has to actually change its habit, change its way of looking, way of seeing, change its view. And this happens slowly, that eventually, or slowly, the mind becomes less interested and, and eventually becomes disinterested and, and, and actually gives up. You see this in the progression of, of insight. A, a, a sotapanna, for example, still has lust, and, or still can have lust, still does have lust, and still does have anger. So, so it isn't the first thing to go. The first thing to go is the idea that these are good things. The Sotapanna is someone who has realized that these aren't really pleasant, aren't really happiness, because they have something to compare it to. They've realized true happiness, which is Nibbana. And as a result of seeing Nibbana, they, they're, they're no longer attached to ordinary pleasures. They have uh, found true peace. So the habit might come back, but the view will not. They know that this is a habit and it's something that they have to kick. And that's why at that point all it's going to take is time, because they understand. 
Yeah, so what you're saying is you see it causing problems. Now that's what meditation does. That's the first step, is to, to see the negative side of it. Um, the second step is to be patient with it. Uh, and practically speaking, this is what happens, is that the first wave is really big, and then the second wave is smaller, and eventually the waves get to just ripples. Uh, but what you have to understand is that it's the same, the same, the same experience. So the same lust will come back again and again and again and again and again. Uh, but but the reassuring what you have to reassure yourself is that it's actually getting less and less. And if you're practicing meditation properly, it will become less and less and less. Same experience that you thought you were rid of because oh suddenly it's gone, comes back. And it will just come back, but it will come back less and less and less. See, I used to be like, wow, she's hot, but I'm trying to make more like meh, just another female move along. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that that's not going to be your answer in the end. It's a nice try, but probably... It's it's only going to have the effect of repressing the feelings for some time. It's a good temporary solution. But the only solution is to confront it head on. And when you do that, the female doesn't have anything to do with it. The female is just a trigger. The, the actual reality is the lust. And it's the attachment not to a female at all. It's the attachment to the pleasure. Um, it's the attachment to pleasant feelings. that you're that, That's what you're attached to even though it's not quite clear about that the woman is just the the trigger for a pleasant pleasant feeling you see a beautiful woman pleasure arises pleasure arises you want more pleasure right? and this is because you know that that woman can bring you more pleasure but it's actually only indirectly because your body is actually bringing you the pleasure so in the end you're just becoming and in the end it's a chemical it's actually the chemicals in your brain that are bringing you the pleasure so it's a chemical addiction, and it's just a drug drug addiction, and you deal with it the way you deal with any drug addiction. That's what's really going on. Sorry to break it to people who who uh, think there's some <laughs> some magic in romance, no? Your life part. I mean, it's uh, it's so crass of me to laugh, but you have to understand you're talking to someone who lives in the in a kut, in a hut in the forest. You're not talking to an ordinary human being. So please excuse my unordinary. Uh, views and, and language but this is this is um, this is our religion this is our uh, viewpoint way of looking at things yeah get it straight it's a chemical addiction <laughs> and um, like all addiction you'd be better without it I guess the problem is we've been so taught that that's all there is to life what you're taking sex away from me you know what's left what what it's true sex is probably the highest the Buddha said there's nothing that there's nothing more attractive to a man than a woman. There's nothing more attractive than a, to a woman than a man. Of course, this is talking about heterosexuals, homosexuals, whatever. The point being, a human being, you find uh, that that's the most attractive thing. It's not food. It's not music. It's it's the human body, the sound of of a woman, the sight of a woman, the smell of a woman. Is what the Buddha said. Um, So, so it, it, this is a hard teaching, and <laughs> you, you, uh, you, know, you, you just take what I say with a grain of salt. If you don't want to follow what I say, no problem. But um, you know, you you won't be able to refute it. And all of the what we call magic of relationships and the magic of love and so what we call love—it's not real love; it's attachment. Love is is the other way around, where you. You, know, you set people free, but um, you know, it, all of that is just a just illusion. It's delusion. It's a, it's a creation. It's a concept that you create in your mind. You know, we it's like it's like theater. You know, you you build up this this identity for yourself, just like you're an actor, because that's all we are. This Shakespeare was totally correct. You know, the world is a stage. We're just playing parts. You pick your part and you play it as you like, you know, or you're casted as a casted in a certain part and you have to play it. 
and so the only thing he left out is is you know the point is to get off stage and, and, and find get a real job <laughs> no uh, stop acting so no i'm not, i'm not sure i think that answered your question